What's up and welcome to FPL Today, I'm JNO, welcome to the channel and welcome to another episode where we go over the different positions in the FPL game and the different values and try and pick out the best players for your Fantasy Premier League 2017-2018 season and today we're looking at budget strikers up to 6.5 million. But before we get into the video, if you enjoy FPL content in your subscription box, consider subscribing to the channel and also hit that notification bell if you want to know when we are going live on the channel. Hopefully I I will do that more when I actually get settled in at my new job, but let's get on with the video. So looking at budget strikers, it was difficult for me to pick out five good budget strikers that I believe are going to be nailed on for the season. So take this with a grain of salt, some of these options may not be nailed on. It's my best bet and some of them will be playing for parts of the season because of injuries, but I am no way 100% confident about these picks. However, we need to keep an eye on this category because Recently, we've had at least four or five really good strikers come from this area in the last three or four seasons. To name a few, you've got the likes of Harry Kane, Igalo, Charlie Austin and Jamie Vardy all coming from this price bracket and then completely, completely outperforming their FPL price. So today we are going to start with Tammy Abraham coming in at 5.5 million. I don't have any Premiership stats for you and you know I prefer to look at Premier League stats. But as far as I'm aware, Fernando Lorente is still out with an injury. And because of that injury, it looks like Tammy Abraham is going to be nailed on. Also, if we look at pre-season, he has scored three goals in pre-season so far for Swansea. And until Lorente comes back, he looks like the main man leading the line there. There is the potential that Jordan Ayew will come in and take over from him, or it could be a 4-4-2. But the moment, Tammy Abraham is looking like he will be the first team striker at the start of the season. So if we look at his stats from last season in the championship with Bristol, he managed to have 40 starts with 41 appearances and got 23 goals with 3 assists. His shots per game was at 2.7 and his key passes was at 1 a game. He had 4 man in a match of Awards and got an average rating of 7.06. Swansea have a decent start to the season with the likes of Southampton, Man United, Crystal Palace, Newcastle and Tottenham as the first five. However, there is of course the shadow hanging over Swansea about Guilfrey Sigurdsson. This could hurt Tammy Abraham's output. It could actually help. You don't know for definite. Sigurdsson seems to find a lot of people with crosses and balls into the box. Tammy Abraham may not necessarily be that type of striker. I don't know. I haven't seen much of Tammy Abraham play. But with a goal scoring record like that from the championship and his preseason form, I'm betting that Tammy Abraham will at least score some goals leading the line at Swansea until Lorente comes back, which is why he makes this list. The next option and the one I would probably take a punt on if I was going to take a punt on any of these strikers from this list is Jay Rodriguez, who has moved from Southampton to West Bromwich Albion and will cost you six million in the game. The downside in this pick is he's not really, by the look of preseason, playing up front. He looks like he'll be playing in a supporting role behind a striker, but if anything, Deli Ali has shown that you can play in that position and still be a very, very effective player in the Fantasy Premier League game. And a lot of FPL managers are remembering a time when he scored 15 goals in a season for Southampton and came in at a very low price and was one of those strikers in the budget striker bracket that was really outperforming their FPL price. However, last season he only had nine starts with 24 appearances in total. That's a lot of substitute appearances. And he got five goals and two assists. His goal involvement while he was on the pitch was actually at 53.8% and his attempts 33 on goal with seven chances created. West Bromwich Albion as we know have a very good start to the season similar to Southampton with Bournemouth, Burnley, Stoke, Brighton and West Ham as the first five fixtures. I feel like if you're going to take a gamble on a striker in this bracket Jay Rodriguez probably is the one you want to go with. My third choice and it's a striker I don't know much about but it seems like someone that is nailed on will be leading the line at his club and it is Steve Mooney from Huddersfield. The fixture list also isn't too bad in the first five for Steve Mooney, so that is why we're going with him. And he's actually managed to score four times over pre-season as well so far, so it looks like he's on form going into the start of the season. 
Last year, he played in France for Montpellier, and he had 32 starts with 35 appearances in total, and he got 14 goals and 3 assists. His shots per game was at 3, which is very good for a striker, and his key passes was at 0.7. He got 3 man in the match awards and got an average rating of 7.27. And with Crystal Palace, Newcastle, Southampton, West Ham and Leicester as the first 5 fixtures, potentially Huddersfield could get off to a good start to the season, and Steve Mooney is the one that will be leading the line. And with players like Tom Ince and Aaron Moy behind him potentially he could have an amazing start to the Premier League season the fourth pick and again it's not someone I know loads about but it's Glenn Murray we are going to look at his 2015 2016 stats when he played for Bournemouth but we know he was never really the first choice at Bournemouth since they've moved to the Premier League however last year he did score 23 goals and got five assists for Brighton in the championship so we have to take that into account we also have to take into account the fact that he's 33 years of age so his time may be managed in the starting lineup but he does also have spot kick duties for Brighton which could of course boost his total but coming at 6 million it looks like he's going to be the first team striker when he can play and in the last season he played for Bournemouth in the premiership he had eight starts and 21 appearances in total he got three goals and zero assists with a goal involvement at 25 he had 25 attempts on goal and created 8 chances in total and Brighton don't have the best of starts with Man City as the first game but then they have Leicester, Watford, West Bromwich Albion and Bournemouth after that so potentially Glenn Murray could do very well for you just before you play your first wildcard. And then finally we have Charlie Austin and this is me taking a gamble on who I think is going to be the starting striker for Southampton. Now I suppose you could just take what I'm about to say and imply it on whoever is going to be the first team striker which could be anyone from Shane Long to Manolo Gabbiadini to maybe even Nathan Redmond. It wouldn't surprise me if Nathan Redmond got to go up front. However, Charlie Austin at 6.5 million does have a history of scoring goals in the Premier League for QPR before he moved to Southampton. And if we look at his stats from last year, despite him not getting that much game time, he still had a decent return for Southampton. He had 11 starts last year, 15 appearances in total, and he got six goals and one assist, meaning he was involved with seven goals. His goal involvement while he was on the pitch was 77.8%, which shows that he's usually the one on the end of the goals when he is playing. Goal attempts, he had 37 and he created eight chances and we all know how good the fixture list is for Southampton at the beginning with Swansea, West Ham, Huddersfield, Watford and Crystal Palace. Whoever the Southampton striker is could be a great pick. We just have to try and figure out who that is going to be. Anyway guys, thank you so much for tuning into this video today on the channel. That is the best I could do picking budget strikers. There wasn't a multitude of options. I suppose you could say I should have considered Dwight Gale. It could prove me very wrong, but I just do not think Dwight Gale can get it done in the Premier League. Best of luck to him in proving me wrong. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit that like button for me and consider hitting that notification bell so you know when I'm going live on the channel. We are almost done with 30 days of FPL and the Fantasy Premier League season and the Premier League season is about to start soon so get excited boys it's almost here check out the links in the description down below if you want to support the channel in any way i've been jay and this has been fpl today and remember it's all about the game